Well done. Five times a candidate has won the popular vote but has lost the election. And um, so the reason that you should listen to my speech is because I will enrich your knowledge a little bit on how our election process works and um, how why we have um, those candidates that win the popular vote but don't win the election or lose the popular vote but do win the election. And there are three central ideas to what I'm going to talk to you about today. So we have um, the Electoral College, the reason that it was established into our Constitution. Um, third, secondly, sorry, um, how that affects, like how, um, sorry, firstly, why it was established into the Constitution, what the election um, process really is, like the Electoral College itself, and thirdly, some future reforms or like what the future of the election, Electoral College looks like. So the reason that it was established into our, found, into our Constitution by the Founding Fathers was that they knew right off the bat that they didn't want direct connection from the population and the presidency. They wanted to make sure that these people were educated as much as our Founding Fathers were, although education was a privilege in 1787 when it was established. So they also wanted to give equal power to the small states and they wanted to make sure that there wasn't a domination just by um, population of our larger states. Um, according to Sarah Wheeler, a PhD in the University of Pennsylvania, she's a PhD in international relations, she states that um, they thought it was beneficial for the Electoral College to only meet four times a year and that this would prevent potential um, manipulation by foreign governments. They also um, wanted to make sure that they avoided any possibilities of a tyrant. And um, this is the way that they have, um, now that it's established into the Constitution in 1787, it's the way that we've been doing it since then. So now that we've touched on why it was established into our Constitution, um, we can talk about what the Electoral College process is because it, it isn't a process. So this consists of representatives or electors that are chosen by their state. And the way that they are chosen is that um, they are potentially, like they have a potential um, gather up of who can be their electors before the election. And then once the election comes and the state casts their ballots, they decide who they want to send off. And those are called the electors. And so they gather every, they gather every four years and this um, happens the second Wednesday of the first two Mondays of December. So when they gather, they cast their votes on the vice president and the president. And um, the National Organization, of, the National Archives Organization released an article in 2001, and that states um, that there are 358 possible electoral votes. To win the election, you need a majority of 270 votes. And these are casted by their um, representatives. So this is um, how they are broken down. And the way that this works is that um, each representative, they represent their state, but they don't have to represent their candidate. So if they come and they represent a Republican state, they don't have to vote for the Republican candidate. Does that make sense? So um, this is a breakup of the electoral votes. And each vote goes by um, the senators that each state has. So now that we have discussed the, now that we have discussed um, what the election, the electoral college is, we can go ahead and talk about um, some potential reforms of the electoral college. So um, the reason that people have stated or advocated reforms are that um, they fear something that is possible or actually something that has been a reality is that we have people that don't win the electoral, um, the sorry, they don't win the popular vote but they win the um, office. And this is very much proven by those five candidates that we have that won the popular vote but are not, did not win the office. So um, something that, they, that has been advocated for mostly other, more than others is called the instant runoff voting or the IRB. And what this initially entails is a ranking of nominees instead of just voting for the highest um, candidate. So what this entails is we have all the candidates and the um, voters will vote and it will be based off of a ranking. If one um, nominee wins more than half, then they would instantly win the election. If not, then the last one who won the last um, 
the least votes would be eliminated. And the process would continue until we have reached somebody at the top. When we have two left, that is called the instant runoff. So now that we have discussed why it was established into our constitution by our founding fathers, and we have discussed what the El um, electoral college process is itself, and what the future of it could potentially look like, um, I hope that this will give a little more understanding to why, like in our recent um, election that we just had in November, something that I think is very prominent in our lives, I think as young um, adults and being in college and having to live through the, um, the election of Donald Trump and Hillary. Um, this election itself is one that represents this because Hillary won the popular vote, yet Donald Trump is our president. So I hope that this will enrich your um, understanding on why that is. Thank you.